Hi, and welcome to what has become part two of my double processing uh, for uh, now Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro, and uh, last week I did a tutorial where I used Photoshop to double process an image uh, using uh, smart objects and layer masks. And today I was going through the new uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2.0 beta. And I found a really cool feature that actually allow you to do the same sort of image processing, double processing, but with the corrections made in Lightroom. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image right here in the center. And this was shot, uh, I guess, about two weeks ago in Dubai uh, with uh, Scott and Jeff Kelby. And uh, let me zoom in and show you. This is actually... Um, an image that has this whole, this is a big open air, uh, open air atrium. These windows look completely blown out. But here's the thing, let me show you this. If you go to the develop module, and let me just slide the exposure down, you can see that there's actually a lot of information outside those windows. That skyline is there, along with the color information and everything else. Uh, the problem is that you can't show it and show the good exposure for the inside unless you do double processing. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this back to the library module. And then I'm going to go ahead and let me get back to the grid mode here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create a virtual copy. Now virtual copies are very cool. They were available in the original uh, version. And what they do is allow you to create as many copies of an image as you want and then process those separately from the original. And so that you could have different uh, different versions and then pick the one you like. Well, it, we're going to use that same sort of philosophy in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, a virtual copy of this image. Okay, and here, so now I've got two side by side here. And here's my virtual copy. Now the second one, I'm going to go ahead and let's go back to the develop module. And I'm going to go ahead and process this one for the area outside the window so that we can get some good exterior looks to this. So I'm going to go ahead and take that exposure all the way down. Uh, about minus almost three stops there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and, and just darken it just a little bit in my tone curve and then the lights and kind of really make it look really good. The buildings are getting nice and snappy now. and um, So that looks pretty darn good. Um, I'm not going to get crazy with it here, but we could all do all the different processing you could normally do in Lightroom. We can go through and, and come back up to the basic um, and we could do uh, clarity and we can do vibrance and we can do all this. Actually, the clarity looks really good. I'm going to leave that. But for the rest of this, I'm going to go back and okay, here we now we have two. I'm going to go ahead and highlight both of these. Now, actually, you know what? I'm going to let me unhighlight one. If uh, you you hit the control and you come down here, this is the same as it's been in other versions, just edit in Adobe Photoshop. But they've added a couple of new items, and one of them uh, you can see you can now open as a smart object in Photoshop which is really nice and we could actually do the same smart object processing we did in the last tutorial but as you can see when I go ahead and highlight uh, both of these images here and let me go ahead and get them both active now when I go to that menu you've got another option that says open as layers in Photoshop this is really cool what it does is it takes both of your processed uh, images your original and your copy or you could actually take just both copies um, if you had like three or four more copies, you can open all of them as l different layers in the same image. And for our purpose, this is very cool because this is going to allow us to double process this image using uh, the interior and the exterior exposures. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just move this darker version up top real quick. Now the rest of this tutorial pretty much follows along the same lines as the one I did last week. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it out just in case you didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn this top layer off real quick. Let me go ahead and hide my uh, my uh, layer palette here. Now I've got the lasso tool and I'm just going to start outlining the windows. Now I'm going to come down into the furniture and such just a little bit. Um, it's not important for me to stay exactly on uh, the window outline. Otherwise I would use a different selection tool uh, without a doubt. But uh, just making a rough outline around the windows, uh, stay close, but you don't have to get right on that line there. And I'm just going to come all the way around here, follow this up here. I'm not even going to worry about the branches and the tree limbs hanging up. I'm just going to come right to the outside and then connect right back and then let go. There we go. I've got my little marching ant selection. And basically all I've done is I've isolated for the next 
portion of this uh, selection. I've just isolated this area. I don't want it to hop over into the floor, and this is going to help isolate just the areas that we want to uh, we want to uh, confine the next uh, selection tool to. And so I'm going to come up here to select, and then I'm going to click on color range. All right, now what you want to make sure on color range is that you have black matte selected down here. It just makes things a little easier. And then I'm going to hold the shift button down, and this eyedropper is going to pass over different areas, and I'm just going to click while holding the shift button. And that's going to let me kind of capture all these areas in here, uh, the different buildings, the different tones, so that I have nice white areas here. Um, don't worry about the window frame or anything else, because we're going to take care of that in the second part of this. All right, once I've got the selection, I'm going to just go ahead and click OK. I'm going to come back to my layers palette. Now, uh, it's real important turn your eye back on so that you can actually see the other part. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a mask to mask out uh, the interior portions using this selection we just made. So just come down here and um, you, can, you can come down and see this portion down here. I'm going to click on this, uh, this layer mask icon right there. And what that did was, and you can see, let me zoom back out again. Um, you can see I actually just masked out the interior portions and allowed the, the exterior portions that we processed to pop right through. Now you can see I got this really cool look. Now it's not quite finished off yet because I'm going to zoom in and show you. You're going to have uh, some ugly areas in here just caused by where the, the mask doesn't quite uh, mesh up in that selection. But one thing you can do is come up to your filters and then go to blur and then go up to and choose Gaussian Blur. Now in the Gaussian Blur, you want to keep this sort of low, but um, as you start playing with that Gaussian Blur, you'll notice that the edges of your selections here are a little softer and look much more natural. And I'm going to just go ahead and click OK. Now the last part of this, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, because what I found, and I actually processed this image once before, was that the all of this uh, framework here for the windows looks really weird and it wouldn't necessarily look bright like that. So I'm going to go ahead and brush over this and let me go ahead and get a big brush here and I'm going to brush over this in, um, let's go ahead and, and do it in, uh, let's try black. So I'm going to hit uh, X, make sure my black's up there. Nope, that's wrong, Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to do it the other way. Uh, in white, that's what I want to do. Okay, now as you can see, it's kind of fixing, it's now it's going to make all these a little dark, and actually, I'm going to take my opacity up on this a little bit. I've got it set down to about 35, take it up to 64. So now my my window frames are going to get a little darker, but that's okay because it actually looks much more natural. Let me get this out of the way. It looks much more natural when you come in here and and darken these in. And now you can see I've got a really cool skyline to go with my very well lit interior. So there you go. That's double processing using Lightroom. Um, you could actually save this and it'll go back out to Lightroom and save it as a, uh, a file right there within your Lightroom browser. In fact, let me go ahead and save that and I'll show you. We'll drop back into Lightroom in just a second here. All right, let's go ahead and go back to Lightroom and uh, oh, look down here. There it is. There's our finished version. Drop back into Lightroom ready to do whatever we want to, take it over to the print module, whatever you want to do. So there you go. That's double processing using the new Lightroom 2.0 beta. Um, if you haven't downloaded it yet, uh, go to uh, Adobe and, and get yourself a, a copy. Uh, I, I don't know how long the beta lasts, but um, I think you're going to be really impressed with some of the great new tools. All right. I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro, and you have a great day.